What's up guys? Back with another twin motion tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I did this nighttime rendering using twin motion. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so the first thing that I want to point out is my lighting setup. Alright, so you know that's important, that's essential to kind of give that nighttime rendering effect with the lights showing inside the building. So one of the things that I've done is that I have two by four fixtures that are a part of the Revit model. And all you have to do is model that in Revit. You can actually add your own lighting into in motion if you feel fit. But I thought it would be a lot easier and a lot faster to go ahead and have my two by four fixtures in my model. So that's already been done and that's replicated throughout the building itself. And as you can see on my material picker here from the tool panel, if you click on the actual light source from the two by four fixtures, I just have a neon zero two with a glow effect of 10.0. And of course you can change the glow effect and just try to see what looks good so it doesn't look blown out doesn't look too intense as far as the lighting goes. So I wanted to actually have it really low. And also I have some lighting here on the exterior and they're just spotlights. So I just use a couple of those and that's replicated on the other side of the building as well. And if you're wondering where you can find those spotlights, you can go to lights and spotlight here. So you can use a different, um, different selections, different uh, options that you can choose from in twin motion, which is really nice. But I just went ahead and used the spotlight. All right, so we have that as a light source and we also have our light pole here that I got from Sketchfab. So that's already have its own light source as well. All right, so let's try to figure out how can we set up our scene to create this nighttime rendering. And we're gonna use the path tracer settings. So stick around and guys, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And if you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment down below as well. All right. So the first thing you want to do is try to figure out what view that you want to start out with. And I already created my view and I have it named as nighttime render. So you can go to these three dots here and you can name it whatever you like. I just called it night render. All right. So our scene is set up as you can see in our viewport. And we're gonna start playing around with some of these settings to try to get the nighttime effect that we're looking for in our rendering. And let's see if I can pull that off. And I would like to know your thoughts on it as well. All right, so in our properties panel, we have our environment tab here. And I want to start trying to figure out in, our, in my settings, will what will create this nighttime rendering for us so here we have the time of day and it's at 10 30 a.m i want to use probably preferably around 12 30 a.m and as you can see our rendering is already dark itself and it's starting to give off this nighttime look which honestly the rendering doesn't look good at all. It just it just gave us the what we're looking for as far as the nighttime kind of effect. All right, so let's kind of further go down our list and try to see figure out how we can get a nice rendering out of this. All right, so for our north offset, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that all the way down to 360. All right, so now we have our appearance and our intensity is at a hundred thousand which is pretty by default I'm gonna change it to 100 and let's look at our temperatures at 56 K 5600 K which is fine we'll leave use temperature on I want to 
change the size of my sun here. So right now it's at 0 0.52. I'm gonna change that to 10 here. And we have our reflection at 0 0.92, which is fine. All right, so now we're in location. We have in the month set for June. Well, we're in the month of May. So I'm just gonna change it to May here. All right, so we have our sky turbidity, which changes the sky turbidity from clear to hazy. Higher levels assimilate occluded lighting due to population dust or aerosols. So you can play around with this to try to figure out what type of effect you want. Um, if you want that from kind of clear to hazy effect, you can definitely do that. I think I'm going to make this about 0 0.4. and my atmospheric density and that just controls the levels of atmospheric density which impacts the color of the sky so right now i have kind of this bluish sky which which is really nice and we have it at 2.0 so i'm going to change that to 5.8 and i'm not sure if you caught that but it actually didn't it was well, it changed it from more of a deep blue to maybe a little bit lighter so let's see what see what let's see what that looks like in our rendering when we get further into it guys don't forget to smash that like button for me hit the subscribe button and the notification bell all right so let's go into our details and our ambient and when we look at this here we have it at one I want to make that 2.0. We'll leave our moon intensity at 1.50. And I have my clouds set to volumetric. And you can kind of play around with that. And if you saw my first video, I did a daytime rendering of this very same scene, which actually turned out very well. And I kind of show you a little bit of my volumetric cloud setting i didn't go in great detail at all but for here that may be for like another video at some point but here i'm going to just crank it all the way up here and just leave it um, at that setting we're not going to play around with the volumetric clouds i just want to have a kind of a clear blue sky and just kind of give it this nice effect all right so also, you can go to season here and to kind of give it more realism, I actually wanted to have this show kind of like it was raining. So we can drag this here. And as you can see, you start to see the ground where the puddles are and it looks wet and it looks really nice. It looks really realistic. I really like how that turned out. So. Try using uh, puddles, try using decals to actually bring out your scene and bring out that realism that you're looking for. Okay, guys, and also this 3D scene model is on renderreboot.com. Uh, check it out. It's a very high quality model uh, designed in Revit and very, very nice, very well detailed model. And uh, just check it out see what you think all right so now surface effects you can turn it on which we already have it on and you can kind of play around with the wetness the puddle sizes and we're not going to worry about that okay so let's go to camera and right now our path tracer is activated so you can kind of see it's doing its thing which is fine so Let's look into our auto exposure. Right now I have it turned on as auto exposure, which is fine. Uh, we still can change some of our settings if you want to do auto exposure where twin motion will just kind of activate the auto exposure to where it picks up on your HDRI or it picks up on um, if you're gonna use some presets. So here we're gonna use Let's change our exposure here. Let's go to 
and my white balance we're going to change that to four eight and we're going to keep our 10 at 0, 0.0 for my local exposure let's keep that enabled and we're going to make that 1.00 and we're also going to make our shadows 1.00 okay all right so now we have our lens we have our field of view we're going to use our focal length and we're going to come in closer right now we're at 23 let's go in at 31 so that brings us brings us in closer to our view as you can see i think it's framed pretty nice all right so we can go to our details and in our details we can start to play around with our vignetting which darkens our corners as well and we can play with our sharpness okay so here with my vignetting i really want to darken the corners a lot because i want this night scene to look a certain way so we're going to darken our corners and we're going to raise it all the way up to 100 percent so you can see the lights are on and it's really because i've activated that vignetting at 100 percent it's really honing in on our actual image that i want to bring a lot of attention to okay so now we have our sharpness here and i don't want to make it too sharp let's do 25 percent okay so now we're going to turn on our parallelism as well All right, so now let's go to render. And it's actually set at a really low quality, which is actually looks pretty decent to me. But let's go ahead and click on high. And let's go ahead and set it to 2048. And also we're gonna change our max bounce from 10 to 15. All right, so we have our emissive materials uh, checked and all it does is it just influencing it just influenced the bouncing the bounce of lighting in our scene So we want to keep that checked. We want to check mark our denoiser and We're gonna leave our fireflies at five So here we can go to FX and we can change our contrast so let's change our contrast uh, to 48 and we're gonna our saturation is at 50% which is pretty high and we want to bring that down because we don't want to we don't want our rendering to look artificial and have that plastic look so one of the things that helps out very uh, greatly is bringing down your saturation so let's bring it down to 38% okay so that's that's looking pretty good guys don't forget to smash that like button for me hit the notification bell and if you got any questions or you just want to say anything, don't forget to leave a comment down below in the description box. All right, so here you can add a color gradient if you like. I actually use South for this one as well. So if you looked at my first video on the day rendering, I used the South filter and you can also use that in the nighttime rendering. It just gives it a different look, different feel. And I'm still experimenting with just different type of color gradients that you can use in your scene and just kind of see what kind of effect it gives you. So don't be afraid to uh, experiment and just kind of see what kind of cool renderings you can come up with. All right, so let's see if I can find it. All right, so South is here. So if I click on South, as you can see, it actually gave this cool effect. It still kept my nighttime scene look. And I think that it and it actually gave it this uh, pretty cool uh, curve appeal. So I really like how it turned out. So here we can go to image and we can make it a 4K image. Just kind of give it a higher resolution to our image and I think that looks nice guys guys don't forget to smash that like button for me and hit the subscribe bell and um, we'll be back with another one